Welcome, greetings. I am Dr. Jamel D. Carter, President and CEO of the Canis Consulting Group Incorporated, a full service management and educational consulting practice where we assist organizations like yours align human capital with organizational strategy. We have a variety of services available to you and your team, such as executive coaching, human resources and organizational development consulting, market research, intensive boot camps such as our nonprofit formation, business growth, grant writing, fundraising advancement and institutional development. In addition, we offer growth circles. These are intimate groups for leaders to come together for professional development, peer encouragement, and up-to-date best practices and research. Join a growth circle today. We have circles for CEOs, entrepreneurs, pastors, executive directors, and educational leaders. This is episode 28 of the Canis Consulting Group's Executive Edge podcast, your source for encouragement, news, information, and commentary, all designed to assist Christian leaders and executives such as yourself thrive in both life and career. I invite you to like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share. If you like what you hear, and if you're unable to wait for our weekly podcast, I recommend that you sign up for one of our alerts and receive breaking news in the world of higher education, nonprofits, business, entertainment, leadership, politics, health, biotech, and pharmaceuticals. To do so, call our offices at one 800 418 5350. The number once again, 1 800 418 5350. In addition, you can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Dr. JD Carter. That is D R J D, as in David Carter. J D C A R T E R. As we do, we're going to open up in a moment, uh, with a moment in God's word, exploring his truth. I ask that you bow your heads in prayer if you're able to join me in prayer. If not, just meditate on the truths that we will find in his scripture, in his scriptures. Dear Lord, we come before your throne today asking that you illuminate our path. We ask that you guide us today. Remove forces that are not of you. We bind and rebuke fear, doubt, worry, fatigue, and stress. Lord, purge and cleanse us once again. Bring peace to the troubled mind. Let them find rest in you. There is none like you, O oh God. So, Lord, we're praying that you will help us draw closer to you. Mend hearts that are broken. We speak breakthrough and deliverance into the atmosphere. As we open your word, O oh God, we pray that you'll remove all distractions Help us to clearly hear your voice. Let our actions, steps, and decisions be pleasing to you. Let us apply what we hear, read, and see in scripture to our lives. In Christ's matchless name, we seal this prayer. Amen. Our text for this week uh, is coming out of both the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke. Uh, we will start with the Gospel according to Luke verses. 11 and 9 reads, I, and I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be open unto you. And when thou prayest, now we're going to Matthew 6, 5 and 6. And when thou prayest, thou shall not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Tim Leston tells a story that has been seen in a leadership, car that he's seen in a leadership cartoon. In the cartoon, a man at a church meeting says to himself, oh, great, here comes Bob. I told him I'll pray for him. Dear God, help Bob, amen. 
He reaches out his hand to Bob and enthusiastically says, hey, Bob, been praying for you. Today, I want to talk about a theme or topic concerning a nation on her knees. But what I find quite interesting is that if we look at what we see in this story of the gentleman who told Bob that he would pray for Bob, but didn't quite pray for Bob enthusiastically or as, uh, as committed as he should be, uh, I think that's a reflection of what we are seeing in our nation. I think we have a lot of people that say that they're going to go to God in prayer and in supplication and, and in dedication. But when we examine what's going on, we have come to realize that maybe people have not as enthusiastically sought God and prayed and, and went to his throne for our nation. We have to understand that God desires us to ask him when we are in need. You know, he knows what we stand in need of, but we will not have anything if we do not ask him, if we do not spend time seeking and searching him and letting him know, Lord, I need you now. I need your help. I need your assistance. I need you to open doors and windows of opportunity. When you find yourself exhausted, when you find yourself unable to go, and you need to pursue uh, a, a little further along the way, those are the moments in which you need to ask God and tell him, I have tried all I can do in my strength, so Lord, I'm coming to you. God desires us to seek him so he can enhance our lives. You know, a lot of people try to do things in and of themselves, and they come to find themselves always falling in media, into mediocrity, falling into favor, uh, not being, uh, uh, falling into favor and uh, uh, failure and not favor. There we go. Falling into failure and not favor. And they wonder why this is. Part of it is because they have not developed an intimate relationship with God. They not sought his advice. They have not sought his counsel. Their lives have not been encouraged. Uh, their lives have not been enhanced because they do not know the benefits that come with being a child of God. If you need an enhancement, if you need your life to be uh, overjoyed, if you need your life to be uh, flowing in what God is calling uh, for, what you think you can become, the best you you can be, you need to spend time seeking God and trusting him. When you need doors and opportunities to open for you, those are moments when you should devote yourself in prayer and, and ask God to guide you and direct you and, and show you what steps to take to draw that customer to you, to, to draw, uh, uh, to uh, improve your standing so you may find yourself in that uh, position of authority or promotion. Doors and opportunities will rarely open up for us if we do not spend time seeking God and asking him for our gui for guidance and direction as to what doors to knock on. God desires us as a body to pray for those in leadership, both at the national uh, and state levels. Uh, we must be praying for leadership at the local level in our various municipalities. We should be praying for leaders that oversee our schools and oversee our churches. It is time for an, uh, this nation known as America to return back to our knees and seek God for guidance and direction. It's time to seek his face. That is something that God is desiring of us is that we will seek his face and ask him to illuminate our paths, to guide us, to direct us, to point us in the directions that we should go. And I tell you, it is God's desire to give you hope, joy, and positive outcomes in your life. But in order for those things to manifest, you need a relationship with him. You must seek his face. You must ask him for his guidance, 
direction and wisdom and you will find yourself blessed. I hope this truth have encouraged you. It is my prayer that you continue to grow in your relationship with your creator. Spend time in both prayer and study daily and watch his presence and favor manifest in his life. Moving to the world of business, there were several stories that I would like to highlight uh, that came up over the past week. Uh, the first one is Janine, Janet Yellen, President-elect Biden's nominee to run the Treasury Department, is stated to argue that the government, the government must act big uh, with its next coronavirus relief package. We know that uh, President-elect Biden has uh, presented a 1.9 trillion stimulus package uh, proposal to those in Congress uh, asking for bipartisan support to get something done uh, to essentially help America to come out of this e economic downturn that has resulted as a result of the coronavirus upon our nation. Uh, we will see how long it will take Congress to act. We do know that by the time you're watching this, uh, President-elect Biden more than likely would have taken the oath of office and would be the president. And we will see if there will be momentum behind his goals as to the direction he would like to take the country over the next four years. A group of attorney generals led by Texas, uh, Ken Paxton, is challenging the ad buying relationship between Google and Facebook. We are seeing that there appears to be individuals not pleased uh, with big tech. <clears throat> and I think big tech may be at a crossroads with their weighing in in political matters. I think they may have found themselves acquiring enemies. And it's going to be interesting to see if they will have, uh, if there will be bipartisan support to start uh, striking and taking away some of the protections that have been found in big tech or will big tech, based on the monies that they have flooded in some of these campaigns, uh, find themselves protected by some of these from some of these regulations that lawmakers are trying to enact. Richard Branson's Virgin Orbit successfully blasted uh, several satellites into space after their failed first attempt. Uh, what I think is interesting about this story is that if there is a will, if there is a way, if there is a desire, uh, what we seem to see is that business will get it done. I must say I applaud Virgin Orbit that they didn't give up after the failure of their first attempt. I think we as people can learn from this, that just because something did not work the first time does not mean that it is a bad idea. Sometimes we need to revisit uh, the idea and make improvements and once again, uh, try to launch that into orbit and see what happens. Samsung Air, J. L. Lee has been handed a 30-month jail term after being found guilty of bribery, embezzlement, and concealment of criminal proceeds. Uh, as a result of this, Samsung shares uh, plunged uh, in various uh, stock markets and exchanges. Moving to a business growth principle, strategy, best practice, or recommendation, uh, I want to talk about uh, a key performance indicator that many tech companies uh, tend to use, but not just tech companies. You can use this for if you have a small business, if you're trying to get a sense of how well your social media uh, or marketing presence may be. Uh, that is looking at page views as a key performance indicator. And this helps to provide a clear marketing and sales perspective. 
How effective is your online social media and internet strategies? If you're unable to answer that question, looking at page views may be a key performance indicator to allow you to see how well you're performing. A website, uh, a page views is a website traffic analytic that assesses the effectiveness of an organization's page at attracting and retaining visitors. Page views is simply the total number of page page views uh, on the site. And so if uh, on the site, it, it can be looked at in terms of the average page views uh, as a way of measuring uh, quality. Uh, a high uh, average number of page views suggests the visitors are interacting extensively with the website. So I think the way we can look at this or the way you can apply this in terms of your business, a high number of page views is a result of one or both of the following. Appropriately targeted traffic, meaning visitors who are interested in what your site has to offer will draw traffic to your site and or online content. A uh, high quality content presented effectively on your site will also draw people to your site. A low number of page views suggests failure to appropriately target as well as failure to deliver high quality content. So if you want to have people go to your site, you have to make sure that one, I guess the two things you're doing, you're, appro you're appropriately targeting a particular audience and you are providing them high level content. I hope that this recommendation on the key performance indicator uh, concerning page views will help you as you make business decisions uh, in these upcoming months and weeks. Every day, there's at least one establishment that is closing their doors never to reopen again. Why does this happen? Many of these businesses lack the ability to read their data. They fail to measure and predict performance. They fail to implement solid strategy built around key performance indicators. Do you know when you need to act? What does your predictive analytics suggest for February? Will you hit your target? If you are unsure, our team of experts can work with your leaders to develop dashboards that will show you how your company is performing in real time. The Canis Consulting Group has a team of well-trained coaches and consultants with C-suite experience that are available to assist you and your leadership team. We have membership plans designed to fit any budget or size organization. Allow us to assist you in aligning your human capital with organizational strategy. Our Platinum membership features weekly coaching along with additional perks and benefits such as Growth Circle membership, a monthly gift, an on-call human resources consultant, an on-call marketing and branding consultant, monthly webinars, and more. Now is not the time to hire amateurs. Get the results you deserve. Bring in our team of experts and allow us to bring your plans into focus. For more information or a no-fee consultation, please call our offices at 1-800-418-5350. That number once again, 1-800-418-5350. Moving to the world of health and education, uh, President Biden's uh, COVID advisor, Dr. Celine Galdner, has challenged Governor Cuomo's letter to buy vaccines directly from Pfizer, stating that the activity can cause more harm than good. I'm sorry uh, about that. Uh, the head of the World Health Organization has come out and said that equitable distribution of the coronavirus vaccine is at serious risk. And what we are seeing from the rollout of the vaccine, well, first, people do have the free choice. There are some people that are 
electing not to take the vaccine. But I guess there's also people are concerned that those with wealth and those that have notoriety and those that have connections are rushing to the head of the line or cutting in line to get access to the vaccine. And there are people that are concerned about this. But I think what this has always revealed is that there is that human tendency that for those that have money, they will always find ways to uh, cut ahead of those that do not have the resources that they have. Bayer's pharma business, a uh, top concern moving forward is the looming patent cliff for its two biggest uh, drug sellers. And what is happening is that it's anticipated that once their two biggest drugs lose their patent protections, there will be a revenue gap in the company that its current pipeline of products will not be able to fill in the next few years. This is something that tends to happen to many pharmaceutical companies and companies in general if they're not consistently evolving and increasing their product matrix uh, to make sure that they're able to sustain a uh, cliffs uh, when they may lose revenue and finances and sales. Private colleges are worried and dismayed that a fact sheet that was released by President elect Biden's coronavirus relief package uh, uh, in uh, President-elect Biden's corona relief package only mentioned helping public universities. And so you have private institutions, many of them that are, are religiously uh, based, are afraid that they're not going to have access to support and capital that public institutions are going to have. And one of the things I think is important or one of the things people may find problematic is that, you know, you're having uh, the government choose winners and losers. And this is something that will continue to happen. And we've seen it with the first wave of PPP loans. Those that were politically connected seem to have found themselves uh, getting the resources before those that were less politically corrected. Three community college leaders in California uh, have been reported to have received backlash against statements they made about the protests that took place at the U.S. Capitol. One of the things that I think most leaders need to be aware of, especially when we're in a divided nation, is that when you state things, when you come out in support or against things, you're not going to have 100 support, 100% uh, support. There are going to be people that are going to be upset. There are going to be people that do not like you. And so I think if you are uh, in the business of wanting to please everyone, you are failing yourself because it's going to be impossible to please everyone. That is one of the burdens and struggles of leadership. So don't try to impress or prove yourself to anyone. Stand by your values and your principles and either people are going to come aboard or they're not. But definitely these presidents spoke out against what they felt was a bad behavior and there were some that disagreed with them. Okay, move on, continue to stand by your values and your principles and don't worry about uh, having 100% support because it's not going to happen. That, as I said, is a burden of leadership. Los Angeles Unified School District Superintendent Austin Boltner is calling on state and local health officials to immediately allow the district to turn its more than 1,400 schools into COVID-19 vaccination sites focusing on providing shots for teachers and school staff in what will become California's largest uh, education vaccine push. Uh, there is definitely a cause for this happening. Uh, we will see if it happens or not. There appears to be a lot of uh, governmental bureaucratic red tape that has slowed down 
of the rollout of vaccinations, but there are people asking for the speeding up of the rollout of vaccines. Hopefully we will get to this sometime here soon. If not, uh, I'm sure there are gonna be a lot of people that may find themselves in the, un in the unemployment line if we're not speeding this process up. Our book recommendation this week is what is what to do when you become the boss. And, and so, like I said, it's what to do. Hopefully you can see that when you become the boss, how new managers become successful managers. And this is by Bob Sheldon. I highly recommend this book. If you are a first time leader, if you're a first time manager and you're unsure what to do now that you're in this new role, uh, I think you'll find some great tips and great device, uh, advice as to how to be successful in your new role. Uh, moving to the world of church and nonprofits, here we have another administration and another possible political headache. And this is something that I think we're going to continue to see, uh, especially from leaders who are involved in philanthropy. And this story comes from the University of Delaware's Biden Institute, uh, which promises in its mission statement to embody, uh, to embody the spirit of honesty, integrity, compassion, and courage. It says has de defined president-elect Joe Biden's career in politics. It has been argued by some that the, as Biden prepares to take the oath of office, uh, the research center uh, which he helped to launch in 2017 to promote scholarship on public policy has the potential to become an ethical headache for his administration, meaning that there are some people that fear that people will donate to this worthy cause of the Biden Institute because they're trying to curry political favor uh, with Joe Biden. Uh, I, I really do think that this is something that it appears all successful people that tend to find themselves in the White House or around the halls of power are going to consistently have to overcome. Houston mega church pastor Kirby John Caldwell has been sentenced to six years in prison for his role in a fraudulent multi million dollar investment scheme. The takeaway or the commentary I want to provide on this particular story, if you are in leadership of a church, you should be careful about what you recommend and about the people that you get in business with or do business with. There are a lot of crooks out there that will use your name to exploit uh, the people of God. Do not allow yourself to be a gateway that's going to open up the house of God for people to fleece the house of God. Protect yourself and protect your sheep. Strong donor relations will be critical to the long-term sustainability of your nonprofit organization. Would your organization be able to benefit from a 20 to 25% increase in support this year? If so, our team of highly skilled fundraising, advancement, and development consultants at the Candace Consulting Group can work with your team to assess your systems and assist you in developing a strategy that will get you back on track. For a no-fee consultation, please contact our offices at 1-800-418-5350. Once again, our number is 1-800-418-5350. The strategic alignment of people with your organizational strategy is important to the success of your organization. It is imperative that your team remains current and up-to-date on changes in the law. Human resources and uh, human resource regulations and laws change regularly, regularly, and for most small and medium-sized businesses and entrepreneurs, it can be hard to stay current on changes while building and maintaining a successful business. If this sounds like your story, the Canis Consulting Group is your solution. The Canis Consulting Group has a team of highly trained 
and up-to-date human resources consultants available to assist your team at a moment's notice. For more information, please call our offices at 1-800-418-5350. Once again, the number 1-800-418-5350. Uh, in business and in life, people do a lot of talking about goals, hopes, and dreams. The truth is many people are not living the life of their dreams. They have settled and are not, and now are feeling unfulfilled. I'm positive that there is at least one or more persons in your orbit that I have no, that you know personally that have failed to reach or accomplish one of their goals that they have been vocal about within the last five years. Why? People that fail to reach their goals tend to not break them down into small bite-sized pro progressions over a period. Successful people know the value of visualizing their long-term state and then determining re realistic steps toward their ideal. Rome was not built in a day and your success will not come overnight. A Christian life coach comes aware that sometimes God's divine plan and assignment for you may take time to manifest, like in the case of Joseph. Trained with a coaching model that is built on keeping Christ at the center of their coaching engagements, Christian life coaches assist their clients in achieving personal greatness. Our coaches at the Canis Consulting Group are members of the Christian Coaching Alliance if you are unsure of the benefits of a coach and would like to see how one can assist you in both your personal and professional preparation, the Canis Consulting Group's associate plan may be right for you. For only $500 a month, you can receive monthly coaching. For more information or a no-fee consultation of our coaching experience, a test drive, if you will, please call our offices at one 800 418 Five three five zero. Once again, the number is one eight hundred four one eight five three five zero. Moving to career advice for those in the C suite to increase your shelf life in any role, you must be able to walk the delicate balance between taking a long term, that is four to five years out journey, that is strategically planned and delivering results now. That's one to two quarters or one to two years. Those that can weave these two approaches seamlessly have been known to increase their tenure in their role. Are you ready to make the leap to your dream position? Our team of talented resume writers and career coaches at the Canis Consulting Group may be able to assist you in breathing life into your job search and interview strategies. If it has been a while since you have had an interview, please send your current resume to our team for an evaluation on the effectiveness of your current resume and selling your strengths. Uh, contact our offices at 1-800-418-5350. Once again, our number 1-800-5350. I hope you found this week's podcast to be informative, encouraging, and noteworthy. Once again, I invite you to like, follow, subscribe, comment, and share. Help us get the word out. I pray that the favor of God shines upon you and your, and your organization this week. May clients come from the east, west, north, and south. May you and your family go from blessings to greater blessings. Until next week, be blessed.